All right, so we're here with an update from Nebraska. Well, we're not in Nebraska, but an update from the Nebraska legislature. Uh, LR14, which is the Convention of States resolution that is on the table there, has already passed committees, so that was win number one, and it went to the floor for its first of three votes, and it did very well. Let's get into it. Okay, so I watched this yesterday. Um, the uh, Convention of States Action Organization, National Organization, was airing this. Um, the entire the entire thing was pretty mundane at points, but you know it really. If you're familiar with Convention of States and what the issues, what the arguments are against it, you already know that they don't make a lot of historical sense, and and it does end up taking people down roads where they don't look like the sharpest tools in the shed. I mean, this, this whole experience for me in watching multiple hearings on these resolutions, you know, the, the whole thing makes me walk away saying one of the amendments that should be added is that there should be an exam that needs to be passed in civics and constitution uh, just to be allowed to run, okay? Because when you listen to some of these people talk, it's so irrational at points where they just, for whatever reason, people can't wrap their head around the ratification process. They just can't wrap their head around it. And they're so fearful of what might be proposed as if anything crazy would have a chance of being ratified by, by 38 states. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. But nonetheless, they still, you know, they, they won't let go. And to the, to the far leftist, all right, not Democrat voter, because they're in cahoots. Democrat voters, 55%, you know, in recent polling, were showing that they're in line with these issues, with term limits, with government overreach amendments, and with fiscal restraints. They're in line with that. It's the politicians. It's the far left politicians. All right. And the reason why they're afraid of this is because this, this ruins everything. It's chitons for you, Rocky. Chitons. Right. If the states go and impose their power on the federal government, if the states restrict the power of the federal government, the hard leftist, the Marxist is going to find a very difficult road ahead for trying to get these crazy things that they want to get done done. They require by nature, Marxism requires an incredibly all powerful federal or central government. So this is an incredibly scary thing for them. So I understand why they're, they know they're not being rational. They don't care, right? Because they have an agenda. What creeps me out is that on occasion when a Republican or you know, not even Republican, just a conservative, you know, in general, be it a libertarian, you know, or, or, or a stronger conservative, the fact that they can't get this and, and, and that, you know, they, they try to stoke this fear this fear in everybody. It's like, oh, if we do this, you, yes, you know, technically the Constitution gives you this power, but this power is far too great to be wielded by simpletons like the state legislatures and the people. This is the type of power that really only the government should have. I mean, it's nuts when, when they try to do this, okay? And, you know, one of the, one of the senators stepped up. I'm going to play her in just a second. She stepped up and made a great case and, and really simply, and this is what I loved about it, is it was simple, it was in layman's terms, and it got straight to the point. Let's listen to what she had to say. I've heard a couple of things this afternoon that, that concern me, and I, I'm not sure what we're afraid of on LR14. Are we saying that we don't, we don't, we're afraid of the people? Are we, I mean, are we so smart that we should be you think we're smarter than the people that sent us here? Or are we saying we're afraid of states' rights? And if we're afraid of states' rights, that's a huge concern because that really takes away any authority we have. So I'm not sure what we fear here. Okay, and this is a big deal. What she just said there is a big deal. Because when you stop and you just use your head, right, and you just think about this for a moment objectively, that's all of these arguments with, with this bizarre runaway convention and that the delegates are going to gain these mystical powers once they get selected and, and all of these things. Really what they're saying is that we don't trust the people. We don't trust the states. We, don't, we the states 
we the state legislatures don't trust ourselves. We can't handle this. This is what they're saying. And she just articulated that so well that I had to replay it for everyone because it's just, it hits the point, it hits the nail right on the head, right? It's, you know, what are we afraid of? What are we afraid of? Like like the idea that this, the legislatures are going to select delegates that are going to go, you know, and, and just go nuts when they get in there. They don't have all that much power. All they have, okay, what, what they're being selected for is their understanding of the Constitution, their, their ability to work out the language of proposals, all right? So the, the way, it, this is exactly the same process as regular, as a regular that we've always done as far as amending the Constitution. The only difference here is who's proposing the amendments. There is no change to who ratifies them. But yet this, this has been, and they've gotten away with it for a long time because it's never been as serious as it is. It's never been a serious threat as it is right now. You know, in the past, it's been, you know, the Supreme Court would make a crazy decision or make a decision that conservatives don't like and conservatives would go and try and rally together to do this. This is a bigger deal now because now all sides are in on this. All sides are agreeing with this. It's not a divisive issue like abortion or something like that. Term limits, everyone, everyone, the majority, I should say, of everyone agrees with. All right. The the minority is loud. There's no doubt about it. But when posed to people, they totally understand the concept of why term limits are needed. They totally understand the fact that fiscal restraints are indeed needed. They totally understand that the federal government needs to be restricted in its jurisdiction. Okay, they understand these things. But these people are trying to scare us into, into not using our power. And, and that, they're, they're past, we're past that point now. We're past that point of allowing others to scare us away when when things have gotten as bad as they have. Now, here's the, this is a a shot of the tally, okay? So 32 to 10 is is what this one, and then there were four useless human beings um, who did not vote at all. And, And those people you can identify by there being no light next to their name. So here's the key. Uh, and if one of those people is in your district, you should be pissed off. All right. Because we're one vote away, as I understand it, one vote away from being filibuster proof here. So this vote now, now the resolution is already passed committee. This was the first of what is three votes. Now there's only one chamber in Nebraska, so there's no house to go to. This is staying in the This is their Senate. They're, they're voted on it once and overwhelmingly supported convention calling the convention of states however they do have the ability to filibuster those few those 10 people and and in order to beat that we have to convince one more person to jump on board one more person all right so pick who you want nebraskans we we need to get the pressure on we need one more person to value state rights we need one more person to join the fight and this can easily turn Nebraska can easily turn into the 16th state. Now this is this is a shock to me. I didn't expect Nebraska to be the 16th state, but right now, and all the legislatures are starting to meet now. Okay, so there's a lot going on. 2022 is a big year for convention of states. Now, and, and January is where a lot of them meet. So this is a big time right now. You're going to see multiple ones. We'll be coming out with updates. I'm sure Cause Action will be coming up with updates. We're kind of giving you the cliff notes uh, so you don't have to sit there and watch a two-hour hearing the way I did or a two-hour debate the way I did, you know, just waiting to hear interesting stuff. But the good news is, you know, we just reported recently about Pennsylvania. So they didn't, they're didn't. they about to go to committee. They had that round table where Mark Meckler just tore into, just gave a straight history lesson to these gun, gun rights activists to try and explain to them that this has nothing to do with the Second Amendment and there is no way that everyone in the room valued the Second Amendment and nothing was going to happen to the Second Amendment. So he gave a quick history lesson there. Easily, anyone who listened to that back and forth objectively knows that that committee is is going to be leaning towards hearing and and likely passing the resolution for convention of states and then that'll get it to a vote in pennsylvania 
So Virginia will just turn their legislature over. There's good things happening all over. I believe Michigan uh, will be debating on it today. So there's a lot going on um, and we're going to keep you in the loop, you know, and, and we're dialed in and we're, we're looking into this stuff. We'll be updating our website as well uh, to make sure we're current on, on the progress of each piece per state. But other than that, right now it's great news just wanted to get this out there so make sure you subscribe make sure you're, you're hitting that bell so when something does come out some new news does come out if you don't catch it elsewhere you will catch it here so you'll get that alert we are present on rumble miwi facebook and and youtube all right so we're looking to get to that thousand mark in youtube if you're watching us on facebook we very much would appreciate you jumping over there and giving us a look and then we also if you're watching this on facebook Make sure you're following our page here as well. The whole idea here is that we're growing the following so that we can keep the, keep the populace informed as to what's going on in these states. It's kind of complicated. Every state's got different rules and regulations. Every state's got different procedures. But I can tell you cause action has been all over this. It's our job to be all over this as well. All right, so let's go ahead, let's get together. If you're in one of these states, you can check state by state on our website, www.thepatriotthinktank.com. Check where your state is at. We're gonna be updating that more currently now that things that we're starting to get some action and some movement. Um, so, you know, check out your resolution, find out who your representative is. We've got links to the Cause Action website as well, uh, where you can sign the petition. Get yourself involved. Get yourself involved, okay? For those that, that have been thinking the problems are too great to fix, they are not too great to fix. And the first step in doing it is asserting ourselves. Asserting ourselves, we're, you know, Marxists aren't the only ones who can march, right? They're not the only ones. So if you've been watching this long, I appreciate you. We'll be back. We got it. We're going to continue on with our with our Article Five for Beginner series, and we're also going to be coming out with a video on mass formation psychosis. I've been digging into that a little bit more. I want to make sure we come out with it. It's productive and gives good perspective, as opposed to just throwing it out there. So, but we're going to be coming out with a video on that as well. So look forward to that. We look forward to seeing you. And just so you know, Jack Burns will be making his triumphant return. He has been gone for some four or five months as he made his move from communist California, from the People's Republic of California, over to Georgia. And he is living the dream over there now. And he looks like he's settled. So he will be coming back to the channel soon. We're looking forward to that. The two of us will be jumping on together as soon as that takes place. All right, I'm out. And like that.